Hey, what's up guys? Today, I'll show you a comedy horror film, Dead Snow, Part 2, Red vs. Dead. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. Previously on Part 1, during the group's vacation in a snow mountain, Martin and his friends discovered a treasure box belonging to the zombie army. Their possession of such a treasure box led to relentless attacks by the Nazi zombies. During the fight, Martin's friends were killed one after another, while Martin was also badly injured, with his smelly cock bitten by a zombie, turning it into a zombified peacock. Finally, he returned the treasure box to the zombies and fled back to his car. However, the zombie captain continued to chase after him because he forgot a golden coin in his pocket. Fortunately, Martin manages to start the car and escape the zombies. The zombie captain is crashed by an oncoming truck while following Martin. Realizing the forgotten coin is the root of problems, Martin throws it out of his car. But soon, due to excessive loss of blood, he loses control and crashes his car into the snow. The zombie captain loses his right arm due to the car accident. Picking up the golden coin, the captain recalls an unaccomplished mission of the past. He then comes up with a new plan. Martin later wakes up in hospital to find his misery has not ended. He has to suffer the police's interrogation because his fingerprint was found on the axe that's used to kill his girlfriend. Based on this piece of evidence, he's charged as the murderer. Martin tries all means to prove he is innocent, but no one buys his smelly bullshit. To his horror, Martin realizes the surgeon has attached the zombie captain's right arm to his stump. The zombie arm goes berserk and attacks everyone within reach, possibly looking for a hormone let-go partner. After killing the doctor against his will, Martin is sedated. In the meantime, the zombie captain has Martin's lost arm replaced and begins to resurrect more zombie troops. However, their physical bodies decay too much to be of any use. The zombie captain turns to the church nearby, kills the pastor, and turns him into his zombie slave. Strangely in the hospital, Martin feels this scene and wakes up in shock. It turns out, after they swap their arms, Martin is able to sense what happens to the zombie captain. Martin wants to tell the police officer, but he soon finds himself strapped tightly to the bed. Fortunately, a young boy sneaks into Martin's room to play hide-and-seek. When hearing rumors of a zombie attack, the boy frees Martin and tells him about the zombie hunting squad established in American. Just as Martin is thinking about how to get out of the hospital, the zombie arm loses control and suddenly throws the boy out of the window. Through the broken window, Martin jumps down to break away. Feeling guilty for the boy, he tries to rescue the poor boy, but crushes his chest into mashed potato instead. The police officer tries to catch Martin. All of a sudden, the zombie arm kills the officer with a car logo. Without any choice, Martin starts the car and drives away. On his journey, the boy's mobile phone rings. It is from the leader of the American zombie hunting squad. Having heard from Martin what happened, leader says the zombie captain is not any ordinary zombie, but the one cursed with a certain mission. Leader instructs Martin to find out what his mission is before they arrive in Norway. Knowing that some professional help is on the way, Martin feels much encouraged. Little does he know that the zombie squad is far from being professional. It consists of merely three American nerdy youths, fanatical at zombie studies. Leader decides to take the whole team to go to Norway. Upon their arrival in Norway, the zombie squad are not allowed to purchase any guns, so they shop for their armor at a hardware store. Martin visits a World War II museum nearby for his investigation. By this time, he has become a wanted man by the police. The museum clerk wants to report to the police immediately, but Martin intimidates clerk with the zombie arm. Clerk then takes Martin to the museum, where they read about the zombie captain's history. It shows that the zombie captain was originally a close friend of Hitler. During World War II, he accepted a task from Hitler to protect the German fleet's biggest warship at Talvik. However, the warship was bombed by the English army as they intercepted its vital information. In a fury, Hitler tasked the zombie captain to wipe out Talvik as revenge. Unfortunately, the zombie captain died on his way to Talvik without carrying out the mission, so he can't let go of the grudge, even as a zombie, and plans to fulfill that mission. From the map, Martin discovers that the zombie army is supposed to pass by this place. Through the window, they witness the zombie captain and his Nazi zombies are slaughtering a group of tourists outside. Such an unprecedented bloody scene freaks Clerk, and he pukes immediately. After the slaughter, the zombie captain revives a few intact corpses and turns them into zombies. Later, the zombie captain leads his army into the museum. Martin and Clerk, having nowhere to go, escape death by pretending to be mannequins. The zombie captain has his troops arm themselves with old weapons from the museum, including a World War II tiger tank, and then they leave for Talvik. Martin and Clerk come out to survey the carnage. The tourist zombies come to attack Martin, but are easily wiped out by his zombie arm. 
Martin stretches out his right arm to close the eyes of a dead tourist, which, however, resurrects the dead man into an aggressive zombie. In terror, Martin kills the zombie right away. Martin again tries to touch the dead zombie with his right arm and is surprised to find the zombie can even be revived by the zombie arm's power. However, this unlucky zombie is again killed by the coming leader. Leader and his two teammates gather around the zombie for a photoshoot, revealing that they are nothing but an amateur group. Knowing that Martin has the power to revive and control the dead, Leader comes up with a plan to kill the zombie captain, that is, to resurrect the zombie captain's enemy, a Soviet lieutenant and his army, who had been executed by the zombie captain during the past war. Leader reasons that once resurrected, the Soviet army will surely take revenge on the zombie captain. Martin, Leader, and a sidekick zombie race to the burial ground of the Soviet army, while the rest work to slow the zombie captain. In the meantime, the zombie captain's army has arrived at Talvik by tank and ruthlessly kills everyone along their way. Clerk and zombie squad decide to lead the zombie captain into a local swamp. Clerk acts as bait to draw the zombie army, but the zombie captain, grown with a smart zombified brain, does not fall for it. He commands a small group of zombies to chase Clerk. When the zombie army gets near, the two girls kill them with pipe bombs. Continuous bombing eradicates the small group of zombies. The zombie captain remains calm and orders to attack them with the tank gun. Clerk and two girls flee in haste. On the other hand, police officers have reached the crime scene at the museum. The sheriff spots Martin in the surveillance video and confirms that Martin is a psychopathic serial murderer. After taking the body to the morgue, the greedy sheriff covets the deceased property. Moreover, to solely take the credit for Martin's arrest, the sheriff decides to arrest Martin before the law enforcement officer's arrival. As the night approaches, Martin's car is trapped in the swamp. Martin and Leader put the sidekick zombie's greasy ass under the tire and then step on the gas to pull the car out. The sidekick zombie is once again revived by Martin. Even though his body is full of wounds, the sidekick zombie remains loyal to Martin. Finally, they discover the graveyard of the Soviet army. Martin resurrects an entire troop of Soviet zombies. However, Martin cannot help but shiver in both his body and hormones when the masculine Soviet lieutenant walks toward him. Thanks to the power of the zombie arm, the Soviet lieutenant and his soldiers become obedient to him. The next day, reports of the Nazi zombies killing come into the police station. The sheriff still doesn't believe that zombie shit, but he deploys the whole team to Talvik just to ensure that he does not miss any credit. By now, the Nazi zombies have arrived at an empty and lifeless Talvik. Martin has evacuated the townspeople and thus prevents the zombie captain from completing his mission. Soon the Soviet troops confront the zombie captain's army. The zombie captain is immediately tensed up when he sees the Soviet lieutenant. He orders to attack the police with the tank gun and waits for his ever-approaching enemy. The zombie captain and Soviet lieutenant start a raging fight, while Nazi zombie doctors are busy providing first aid, caring for the injured zombie soldiers, and getting them back to the battle. As the tank runs over the police car, Sheriff and his officers flee to the resident's house nearby and watch the zombie war. Right then, Clerk and the two girls finally come to support Martin. The battle goes well at first, but later the Soviet lieutenant is sneak attacked. During the chaos, the zombie captain takes this chance to terminate his old enemy. By now, it is clear to everyone that without killing the zombie captain, this mess will not end. So Martin directly confronts the zombie captain, while Leader attempts to take control of the Nazi zombie's tank, but he struggles to fight with the zombie driver inside. As the Nazi zombie overpowers the Soviet troops, Clerk gets killed, and the two girls are besieged. The tank flings out of control and rushes into the house where Martin and the zombie captain fall into a fast and furious fight. Martin and the zombie captain continue with their fight on top of the tank. Leader manages to overpower the zombie driver and breaks the tank unexpectedly. As such, Martin is thrown into the car nearby. The zombie captain thinks he is winning and stands up on top of the tank. Just when the zombie captain is about to claim his victory, Leader fires the tank gun directly at the zombie captain, giving a deadly blow to its head. Thanks to the deadly blow job, the captain's troops fall lifelessly to the ground, saving the two girls from danger in time. The four celebrate their hard-won victory and bid farewell. Following their departure, the timid sheriff and his team finally come out to clean up the mess. Martin drives to the church where his girlfriend is buried, digs up her greasy corpse, and brings her back as a zombie. As the couple is burnt with horny passion and proceeds to let go of their zombified hormones, the sidekick but loyal zombie just arrives in time to witness their hormone game. Although he doesn't know exactly why his master rocks the tiny car violently, the zombie wears a joyful smile, standing like a peeping tom in the near distance. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.